Have you ever caught yourself saying, I want to step outside and get some fresh air? And maybe even want to go to the beach and relax? Uh, why is that? Why is it so nice to sit by a beach, the waves are crashing against the shore? One of the things that they found is there's positive and negative ions in nature. And there's also uh, ozone uh, created every day from, guess what? Sunlight. As sun rays, UV rays come through the atmosphere, it creates ozone. And ozone is what naturally fights air pollution in cities and towns. See, up here, there are positive and negative ions as well. And in our buildings, everything is being built tighter and tighter all the time. We have central air units. We have limited um, fresh air coming inside. So how do we solve this problem? Well. I'm going to share something with you that BE Machinery and BE Industries uh, created. And they've been doing this for many, many years. But now with the rise of coronavirus, they found a solution to kill it dead in its tracks. Let me show you how. Okay, so we're going to show you the AIR 1030, AIR 1030. And this is really three machines in one. BE Industries, just to give you a little bit of background, has been in Israel now for almost 30 years. They've been there, the people have been there for 60 years, but um, Filter, I think, has been 30 years. Um, they've been making NBC protection, nuclear biological chemical protection filters for hospitals, schools, uh, army bases, tents. Uh, NATO, they do about 90% of their business. For, from everything, for filters for military vehicles, tanks, uh, operating rooms, etc. I was in one of the hospitals at Rambam and it's, it's pretty amazing uh, what they've done there, the filtration system, and how that hospital can actually go underground three levels deep um, in a matter of days. So they can be operating on people down below if they need to. That's how much um, BE Industries knows about filtration. They've done a fantastic job. They've done some of the biggest hospitals around the world. So they know filtration. They know chemical uh, and biological uh, situations. In fact, Ebola, they were the people who had a tent that was on a gurney with a, a special filter for bringing back the doctor from Texas when he had contracted Ebola. So this isn't something that they just came up with and they're now getting into the, um, the cleaning business or the uh, disinfecting business. They've been doing it for a long time. So what do we have here? One, we have a pre-filter and it's a pretty cool design. I'm gonna set this on a stand so I can have hands free here and be able to show you this a little bit better. So you pull this down and inside you have a HEPA filter. And the HEPA filter is good to 0.3 microns. Um, people would say, well, you know, coronavirus is about 0 0.013. Uh, OLPA filter we can also put in here is 0 0.012. But the water droplets that cause the coronavirus to travel and spread uh, are anywhere from 0.1 micron to 0.3 micron. So HEPA filter should be good if it pulls it back through. The secret here is this. This is called a bipolar ionization generator. Uh, there's is called a sterionizer and they've had a patent on this for a long time. Uh, it's been used in um, air, air uh, systems in big buildings for a long, long time. Uh, the NBC protection that we talk about, those are part of that as well. And they've been tested for H1N1, H5N1, and just recently COVID-19 in multiple universities in multiple countries. So, <clears throat> and I believe it was 30 minutes with just sterilizers with positive and negative ions. It uh, completely 100% removed COVID uh, from a Petri dish in a room. So that's pretty impressive. With this unit, um, it actually produces more ions. It's 50,000 uh, positive negative ions per cubic centimeter. And, and that's what you're gonna find outside at the beaches and at the rainforest. I've had people ask, Todd, is it safe? Well, if you're at a beach, you're already experiencing it and you don't have the salt in the air, you don't have uh, the ocean waves, but you have the ions and it's, it's very safe. So the other thing that is in here is an ozone machine. And that ozone generator is only to be used to sanitize a room when nobody's in it. So let's say it's in a hospital, in an operating room. 
uh, in between patients coming in and, and going out, what we would do, turn the key on, we'd have it set for a matter of minutes, it would clean the room, sanitize the room, and then boom, it shuts off, it keeps filtering the air with the sterilizer, and you're good to go. So we have other units that have sensors, it actually hits 2 ppm, and it, it actually verifies that it held 2 ppm for so many minutes, two minutes, three minutes, and that's enough for most uh, viruses. Ozone is very, very effective. The nice thing with ozone, and I know people shy from it sometimes, but when you truly understand what it is, it's O2 that by elect electric or UV, uh, it adds a third um, oxygen molecule and it becomes O3. So it can't stay O3 uh, because it's unstable. Not that it'll explode, but unstable as far as staying O3. So to become ozone, it's O3, uh, it has a very short half-life, which means once it has done its job, it's going to dissipate back into oxygen. It doesn't leave a film thickness. So schools that are using misters, for instance, uh, they have to come in and wipe the tables down to get rid of the organic, and then they're having to come in with the mister, and then they have to come back in and get rid of the, um, the residue. If you leave food out or a drink out and you've used a mister, you gotta throw it away. With ozone, you don't. In fact, we have some information about food and how sterilizers and ozone actually help extend food life because it kills the bacteria on the outer shell of the, the food. So what is coronavirus? Let's talk about that for a second. Um, number one, it's not a living being. Uh, it doesn't metabolize, it doesn't reproduce on its own, it doesn't grow. It's basically um, a nucleus with a protein shell, a protein shell on the outside. I like to compare it to a tennis ball uh, because I think it's easier to understand. A tennis ball, um, if you throw it against Velcro, it'll stick. And that's kind of what the coronavirus does when it connects to a cell. It has to have a cell. Um, all it has inside the nucleus is either DNA or RNA. So it's either a rod style or it's DNA. And what it wants to do is it wants to get to a cell and then it opens up or absorbs in, releases the DNA or the RNA into that cell, then that cell reproduces and it has that RNA or DNA, DNA in it that's how it multiplies. So with these units, let's say somebody's in the room and they sneeze. Well, what happens is all these droplets go into the room. Some of them fall immediately to the ground. Some of them stay airborne because they're, they're, they're meant very, very small in size. Will they be drawn back into the HEPA filter? Well, some may, but more than likely, a lot of them will not. So with the sterilizer, you have positive and negative ions they go out, surround it, turns it into hydrogen peroxide. It's really the little brother to ozone. It eats that protein casing, destroys it, and neutralizes because it can't stick to anything if the protein casing is gone. It's like removing the fuzzy part of a tennis ball and trying to throw it against uh, Velcro. It's not gonna stick. So that's my simple version of explaining it. I try to keep things simple because I think when we kiss it, keep it simple, stupid, it makes it easier to understand. So hopefully that wasn't too simple, but hopefully it makes sense. So that's what it does. It keeps it from spreading because if it can't stick to a cell, if it can't stick to organic material in your fingers or whatever, uh, it's, it's rendered useless. So that's what this machine does, okay? It also uh, takes care of allergens in the air. It takes care of mold, mildew, smells. Um, you get a lot, for this unit. We do have units that are only sterilizers, and that was what was tested against Corona, just the sterilizer. It's sufficient, but this unit here uh, gives you uh, more protection, uh, and it, it actually cleans the air. So how does this work? Well, you've got three levels here. One, two, and three. Most rooms will probably be good on one. Uh, the bigger they are, uh, it puts out more ions, uh, the blowers blow faster, and it produces enough to keep it at a level that can uh, keep the room safe. So you run this 24-7. You don't have to turn it on and shut it off. You just leave it running. 
takes very little energy. When you go to leave the room, this model has a physical key. The other models will actually have like a remote, um, either from your phone or a, a keypad. And you have to punch in a code to turn the ozone on. So nobody can just run up and turn the ozone on. And remember, the ozone is only to be used when nobody's in the room. We have tested it, like if kids were in a classroom and they go out to recess, if you run it for 30 seconds, the ozone, the VOCs drop immediately to zero. So ozone's a lot quicker and it's such a minute amount. Keep in mind 0.1 ppm, OSHA says that uh, people can be exposed to 0.1 ppm in eight hours, that's safe. Um, EPA, I believe, says if you're gonna be in the room with um, uh, ozone, they, they'd like to see it at 0.05. At 30 seconds running this machine, um, it's it's very, very, very minute. You can't even really smell it, but it drops the VOCs very quickly. So to turn it on, you hit this switch. The light comes on here, here, and there's one underneath, and one on the other side. And what that does, it gives you 10 minutes to get out of the room. Uh, you can shut the door, then it's gonna kick on the ozone, run it for one hour, it generates seven grams per hour and it's also bringing it back through the filter and it's cleaning anything that's caught in the filter if it's a germ a bacteria or mold it's going to kill it so the, your filter stays clean so in a nutshell that's the air 1030